This question starts off by giving us our inverse demand in a high period and in a low period. It tells us marginal cost is $2, and it tells us there, there is no inventory. And it says, it, it says this sentence, it is not economical to store output until next period. So that just means we don't have to worry about inventory. It tells us that we can purchase a forecast, and um, it gives us some information on how that forecast can help us. But first, let's notice that it, usually in these problems, we have to solve for a lot of the numbers that they've given us in the context of the question. For instance, it says, if you do not purchase a forecast, expected profit is $70. So it just already gave us what our expected profit, given no information, was. It tells us if we purchase a forecast and we get good news, we expect to make $85. So again, usually we have to solve for this number. Now they've just given it to us. From past experience, you know that the probability to get good news is 50%, which means the probability of getting bad news must also be 50%. And it says when given bad news, we think the chances of success are 25%, which means the chances of failure are 75%. So the question here says, what quantity should you produce to maximize profit if you buy another forecast and it predicts a bad year? So if we get bad news, what's the quantity that we should produce? Well, let's first start from our expected profit given bad news formula, which is our 25% times our total revenue of high demand plus 75% times our total revenue of low demand minus, again, the marginal cost only associated with our quantity in a high period. And of course, this is subject to the constraint that our quantity in a high period must be greater than our quantity in low period. So we're gonna have to solve for QH and solve for QL and check to make sure the constraint is not broken. And if it is broken, we'll have to solve this, this problem uh, under a different assumption by just replacing QH and QL with just Q. So first, let's take the derivative of this thing with respect to QH. We do this, we can leave the uh, probability outside the parentheses at first just to make our derivative a little easier. And starting from here, we can now distribute that 0.25 through because we're, gonna, we're going to have to and start to solve. We combine like terms and divide through by 0.25, and we solve for the quantity in a high demand period is equal to eight. So we have to check the constraint to make sure it's not broken. We need to solve for our quantity in a low demand period. So we take the derivative of that same profit function now with respect to QL. We can leave our uh, probability outside of parentheses, and this time it's gonna make life a lot easier because we don't have the marginal cost. So we can divide both sides through by 0.75. 0 divided by 0.75, of course, is still 0. So we can just get rid of that 0.75. It doesn't affect our quantity in a low demand period. And we solve, and we see that QL is equal to 12. Well, we have a problem, because that is larger than QH. So we need to go back and solve this using a different assumption. So replacing all our QHs and QLs with simply Q, now we can solve for Q. Taking the derivative of this with respect to Q, we're gonna to have to do a little math here, distribute through our 0.25 and our 0.75, because now both of them will matter because they're both linked with just Q, and that marginal cost is just Q, has just Q on it. We can combine like terms, and we solve for our quantity to be 11 units. So this is the answer to our first question. So first let me talk about this. What if we would have found the constraint not to be broken? Well, it asked us what quantity we produce in a bad, given bad news. Well, if our constraint's not broken, so if QH was larger than QB, we always pick QH, right? We're never gonna produce QB. We just have to, we have, we just have to use QB to check the constraint. So at any time that we're solving for what, what our capacity is, as long as the constraint is not broken, we're gonna use QH. If the constraint is broken, we're gonna use Q. So just make sure to remember that. The next question says, what is the expected value of another forecast? Well, we know that the value of information is equal to the expected profit given information minus the expected profit with no information. And they've already given us half of this in the question. They told us that without information, we expect to make $70. So we need to solve for the expected profit given information to answer this question. Well, the expected profit given information, well, that's equal to the probability that we get good news times the expected profit given good news, plus the probability that we get bad news times the expected profit given bad news. 
And again, they've given us a lot of this information. They told us that 50% of the time, we're gonna get good news. And they told us the expected profit given good news, which was $85. We, we know because 50% of the time we're gonna get good news, it must be that 50% of the time we're gonna get bad news. So the only component we have to solve for is the expected profit given bad news. And we've already done most of the work here because this was our profit function and we found that the quantity would be 11. So all we have to do is plug in 11 everywhere we see quantity and solve for our expected profit given bad news. We, we find that this is $60.50. So we can go back to our expected profit given information line, plugging in our $60.50, and we can solve for expected profit given information to be $72.75. So we're finally ready to answer the question. The value of information in this case is 72.75 minus 70 or 275.